In today's Inkscape lesson, we'll learn how to quickly and easily add color to line art with the Paint Bucket tool. We can actually do this with line art that we create in Inkscape, as we'll see later in the video. But because it's easier to draw line art either in painting software like Photoshop or by hand first than scanning it into the computer, we'll first take a look at how to fill in line art from an imported image. First, to import an image, we can click this button up here. The image I'll use is one of a kid who appears to be holding a very large carrot. I provided a link to this image in the description below in case you want to use the same one to follow along, but feel free to use your own line art image if you want. Okay, to import it, we can double click it, then click OK here. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is get rid of the white background. This is because we're going to put the line art and the colors on separate layers, with the line art always on top. We want to be able to see the colors underneath. To do this, we need to convert the line art into paths using the Trace Bitmap dialog. To open the Trace Bitmap dialog, we can right click the image and choose Trace Bitmap. As we can see in the preview down here, the default settings actually do a really good job with this image. If you're using a different image, you might need to adjust the threshold setting up here a bit, but as long as you stick with black lines on a white background, you shouldn't have much of an issue. Okay, we can go ahead and click apply down here and wait for it to finish, and now we have a vectorized version of the line art with the background removed. The main thing we want to look for in our line art now is that we don't have any gaps in the lines for any areas we want to fill in. That's because the paint bucket tool will only fill in areas that are completely enclosed. All of the lines in here look great, but if we deselect it, we can see that the areas at the borders are not fully closed in. To fix this, we're going to need to put a border around the lines. To do this easily, we can undo with Ctrl Z to put it back in line with the image, turn on snapping with this button up here, go to the pin tool, snap to this corner of the image up here, then this one down here, then over here, then up here, and click the first point again to close it off. And we can make the stroke thicker by right clicking the stroke width value down here and choosing something higher like 4. Now we can go to the select tool and select the image by clicking in the background area and delete it. We can see that all of the areas of our line art are now fully enclosed, so they're ready to be filled in with color. We can go ahead and close out the trace bitmap dialog now and turn off snapping. Next we want to create a separate layer for the colors and we want to put it underneath the line art layer so that the line art stays on top. Let's first rename our current layer by going to Layer, Rename Layer, giving it a name like Line Art, and pressing Rename. Then we can go to Layer, Add Layer, name it something like Colors, choose below Current for the position, and click Add. Now our currently selected area is the Colors layer, as we can see down here. So we can switch to the Paint Bucket tool here and start coloring in our Line Art. Okay, so the way the Paint Bucket tool works is, when we click in an enclosed area like the cloud here, it creates a new path in the area by using the color of the tool to fill in the screen pixel that we clicked, then it fills in all the surrounding pixels until it reaches pixels that don't match the clicked pixel. This includes the pixels of the line art. But due to anti-aliasing, if we zoom in on the cloud by putting your cursor there, holding control and scrolling up the mouse wheel, we can see that the pixels close to the lines don't get filled. And actually, because the tool goes by screen pixels, when we're zoomed in like this, we can get a more accurate result. So if we undo with Ctrl Z and click the area now, the color gets closer to the lines. It's never going to be perfect though. Fortunately, however, we have this Grow Shrink By setting up here. After the tool creates the new path, it grows or shrinks the path by whatever value we put in here. Negative numbers will shrink it, and positive numbers will grow it. So if I undo and set this to negative 1 for example, then click the area, the path shrinks by 1 millimeter, which is what my units are currently set to. If I undo again and set it to positive 1, it grows by 1 millimeter. If I zoom in more, there's still a tiny bit of the area that didn't get filled. So I can zoom back out, and to pan here I'm holding down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Then I can undo again, set this to something a little bit higher, like 2, and click the area, and now it's pretty much perfect. Depending on the image you use and your zoom level, you might have to try a smaller or larger number. 
we mainly just don't want to make it so large that the color starts to go outside the lines. Also, the reason we're doing the color on a layer that is underneath the line art is that otherwise the color would be overlapping the lines right now. Okay, now to change the color of the paint bucket tool, we can click a color in the color palette. However, one important thing to know about the tool is that after it creates a new path, it automatically selects that path. So if we click, for example, white down here, not only does it change the color of the tool, as we can see by our cursor and at the top right here, but also changes the color of the selected path. And now because the tool color is white, we can go ahead and fill in any other areas that we want to be white, like the other cloud and maybe the front of the house. Actually, if we zoom in here on the front of the house, we can see this tiny area here that is blocked off from the large area of the front. We probably want this small area to always be the same color as the large area. But if we fill in the small area right now, then decide later that we want to change the color of the front of the house, which I will do by going to the select tool, selecting the big path here, and choosing a different color. It of course doesn't fill in the small path because these paths are separate. However, if we go back to the paint bucket tool and undo a few times so that both areas are no longer filled, we can fill in the big area, then we'll shift and fill in the small area. Holding shift will make the tool perform the union path operation between the new path and the selected path. So these two are now actually parts of the same path, and changing the color of one will change the color of the other. Similarly, we can fill in part of the sky, change the color, then hold shift and fill in the other parts of the sky. including these tiny areas over here. Now we can change the color of all parts at once. We can actually also further refine the color with the fill and stroke dialog by opening it with this button up here, then adjusting the color. Okay, let's go ahead and use all that we learned to fill in the rest of the drawing. If you want to make the color of an area the same as another area, we can click this eyedropper button at the bottom of the fill and stroke dialog, then click the area with the color we want. Okay, now let's say we want to change the color of this little piece of grass sticking out of the ground here. Because it's not enclosed, it got filled in with the ground color. To change the color, we need to switch to the pen tool and create a path that will enclose the area like this. Now we can go back to the paint bucket tool and fill the area, then make it whatever color we want. We also still have the little path we created here, but it's being covered by the green path. If we want to delete it, we can go to the select tool, hold alt and click in here to select the path, then press delete. I also see that the tool missed some tiny areas here on the ground. So I can select this path here, go to the paint bucket tool, hold shift and click the small areas to add them to the path. And as you can see, it will use the color of the selected path, which is pretty convenient. Alright, so that's how we can add color to an imported line art image. 
As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we can also do this with paths we create in Inkscape. First, we want to go back to the line art layer. To do this, we can open the Layers and Objects dialog by going to Layer, Layers and Objects. Then choose the line art layer in the list here. And by the way, here's what it will look like if we hide the line art. Kind of strange, but also kind of cool. But anyway, I'll show the line art again. Now we can go to the pen or pencil tool and create a random sketch of something. Then we can select all the paths and increase the stroke width. Go back to the colors layer, switch to the paint bucket tool and start filling in the sketch with color. Actually, I'll undo that, then zoom in some to get a better result. Okay, that should do it for this lesson. I encourage you to try this out with other images, as well as with line art you've created in Inkscape or other software. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.